Okay, MPI, how's it going? My name is Ryan Mack, and today we're going to talk about credit. Credit is one of those very important topics, and I really want to make sure that you can understand exactly how important it is. So let's jump right into it. It's so important, and it, we're going to talk about what is credit and, and define it. What is a credit score? We're going to explain what a good credit score is, the five elements of a credit score and how each is calculated the purpose of a credit report and how one should use a credit report and explain how to order a copy of your credit report. So important. We're going to help you read and analyze a credit report, explain how to clean up your credit report, the three steps of disputing a credit claim. Very important. You definitely want to pay attention to that. Identify ways and build a repair to build and repair your credit history. And we're going to summarize these seven steps to cleaning up your credit. So you want to grab a pen and a pad. And always remember, if you have any questions, you want to get a copy of this deck to send to you so you can make notes on yourself, maybe print it out, take some notes and help you along the way, please send me an email, information we be given to you at the end of this workshop. So what is credit? Think about this for a second. What, would a, what scenario would a financial professional define as credit? A, mother gives her son some money to help him start his art business. Her son does not have to pay it back. B, the son needed more money than his mother could give, so he went to a loan shark and borrowed some money. C, the father gives the son recognition for starting his business. D, the names that scroll at the end of a television show. Which one of these, think about it for a second, which one of these would a financial professional define as credit? Well, D, the credits that scroll name at the end of the show, they are credits. But a financial professional would not define a, a financial professional would not define it as credit. C, the father does give his son recognition or credit for starting the business, but that's not the definition of a financial professional would give. A, many of you might have said A. Many times that I've given this workshop, a few people I've had said A. Mother gives her son some money to help him start his art business. Her son doesn't have to pay it back. That piece right there alone says, makes it not A, because that is not a loan. A loan is something you have to pay back. And the mother says you don't have to pay it back. Therefore, that's not A. So the answer is B. The son needed more money than his mother could give, so he went to a loan shark. Uh-oh, you know they provide some high interest rates. Hopefully you're not using loan sharks and borrowed some money. So the answer is B, credit is the ability of a customer to obtain goods or services before payment based upon the trust. That's the that's magic word, folks, trust. I'm going to give you some money and I'm going to trust that you pay it back to me. Now, if your trust is in question, then I might not give you that money at all. Or... If your trust is questionable and you are perceived as a risk, I might have to pay you, charge you in higher interest rate based upon the level, the lesser amount of trust. So as my trust in you gets lower and lower, the interest rate that I'm going to charge on a loan to you gets higher and higher. But if I really trust you and boy, that doggone, you've got good credit. You've, you've got a good history of paying loans back. Then you know what? The interest rate is going to be lower and lower. The more I trust you, the lower I charge you to borrow the, to, to let you borrow my money. Based upon the trust, a payment will be made in the future, often called a loan, a promise to pay back money with borrowed interest. Remember, interest and trust are negatively correlated. The more I trust you, the less interest I charge you. The less I trust you, the more interest I'm going to charge you. So we have to establish trust. And we're going to talk about how the rest of this workshop, how to establish that trust to make sure you can save some money. Because remember, in the course we always talk about, and hopefully you signed up for the course, interest in versus interest out. It's a key wealth building principle, meaning interest in you want to maximize. That's on savings. You want to maximize the amount of money you're earning on savings. Versus interest out. You want to minimize the amount of interest you're paying on debt. 
So interest in maximized, interest out minimized helps you build wealth faster. So when we're talking about interest, it, it's imperative for you to want to build trust and establish yourself as someone is trustworthy, that's going to make you pay less interest and help you build wealth faster. It's all about building wealth, folks. Gentrification is a big word. It's often thrown around a lot. Gentrification essentially means individuals moving into a community of higher income earning ability. They move in, they might demand better goods, services, they demand for that the community, the community begins to increase in value. So as the community increases in value, individuals in that community that are renting, as the rent goes up, they can no longer afford that rent. They might be displaced. So incomes with higher income, people with higher income move into a community. Individuals with lower income can no longer afford to become priced out of that community, they have to move. Where I lived in Brooklyn, I was a cause of gentrification. Here I am, a stock trader, earning a good bit of money, earning a very nice salary, moving into a community, into an urban community in Brooklyn. And that community my income was definitely higher than most in that community. So more people like myself moved into that community. Those who lived there, as the rent started to go up, my apartment, when I moved into Brooklyn in 2000, in 2000 was $1,200 for a three-bedroom apartment. I don't live there any longer, but that same apartment is now going for $2,500. That was 2000. The time of recording this is 2024. So that rent has more than doubled over the years. That's gentrification with people who live there, lower income can no longer afford. Now, I say all that to say, how do we prevent this? Or how do you call, prevent yourself from being displaced? Remember I said renting. Ownership is one of the best ways to stop gentrification. If you own, my landlord, she owns. She's not priced out. She benefited from the rise in property value because she was owning. If you rent, you have the possibility you might be priced out if you can no longer afford to pay that rent. So ownership is one of the best ways of preventing gentrification. How do we own the only two people who can purchase homes. Lots of money and good credit. That's right. If you have a whole lot of money, if you got millions, millions of dollars laying around, then you'll be okay. However, if you're like the bottom 95% of this country that does not have all this money laying around, the majority, almost everyone, almost everyone, remember, those who are high net worth, uh, 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 in the top 95, 96, 90, in the top two, three percent of this country, they've got enough money to, to pay for it. But the most, most of us don't have that. You've got to have good credit. So I say that to say the gentrification can be avoided by having good credit. So we got to push towards a ownership society, an ownership community, owning our own homes owning stock, and that's also a wealth building principle. And how do we own? Good credit. If you have good credit, that puts you in a position to be able to be that homeowner and helping you to not be a victim of gentrification. Credit is important to you. Emergency purposes, times when you don't have cash, allows you to pay for large purchases over time, like a home, like we just talked about. Helps you obtain employment. Now, employment is a big piece. I've actually advocated against employers using uh, your credit report as a means of employment. I think it's personally, I think it's discriminatory. But as of right now, they can still use your credit report to see if they can assess you to see 
if you are trustworthy enough to even get hired for a job. Your insurance premiums, better off your credit is, the lower you'll probably be paying on your insurance premiums. So check out this question. <clears throat> a son's art business is growing. He was able to pay back the loan shark, but doesn't want to borrow from him again. He wants to borrow $500 for some credit customer relationship software so he can better track his clients. He gets a loan from a bank and pledges his painting equipment as collateral. If the son does not pay back the loan, what will the lender do? Well, the answer is obvious. Because he pledged it as collateral, the lender can go after that supplies and repossess them as collateral. Collateral is just another way for banks to help establish credit trust with you. Now, I might not trust you because I don't know you, but I know if I can repossess your car, that's going to help me establish trust. I can I can use your car as collateral. Or if I can put a lien on your home, then I can take that house that helps me to trust you because now I have an asset that I can, a value that I can take in case you don't pay me back. Collateral is just another way to help a lender establish trust. What is a credit score? The number that determines so much in your life is so important. There are basically two types. The Fair Isaac Corporation, FICO score. Many people don't know what that term means. Many people think the F is like federal or financial. It's not a federal organization and it doesn't mean financial. It's the Fair Isaac Corporation. It's a private entity that basically has an almost monopoly over this industry. There's another score that's become a lot more popular. It's gaining in traction, but it's still not as popular as the FICO score. So for the remainder of this workshop, we're going to be going using the FICO score. And as you see here, it goes from 300 to 850. You want to be in the top 20%. I believe that number is probably even lower now, post-recession or post-pandemic rather. You want to be in that 800 or better number, okay? 800 or better is what we want you to strive to. This slide says 750. It's good. It should qualify for most prime rate. But remember, 800 is where we want you to go. 720 to 749, it's good. Might not qualify, might not for prime rates. 680 to 719 average, but you should start building it up AS A A A ASAP. 620 to 679 below average, 619 and under is poor, and we got to build it up. We're going to talk about how to do so. The five elements of a credit score, 35% is the record of paying your bills on time. 30% is your total balance on your credit cards and other loans compared to your total credit limit, how much you have borrowed compared to how much you have an ability to borrow. That's called your credit utilization ratio, okay? Lenders want to see that number as low as possible. That means you have not used as much as your credit and you have the ability to pay them back if you need to do so. If they see that number at 50, 60%, that's a red flag. That means you've used half of all that you can. And if it, uh, some people I've seen it as 90, 95%, that means you're almost maxed out. Lenders want to see that number Below 30%, ideally, in a good uh, in a good scenario, 5% or lower. Let us help you with getting this number down by paying off debts. It's one of the things we do part of this program in the office hours, helping individuals negotiate their debts to get these things paid down. Length of credit history, 15%. Your oldest card is your most favorable card to lenders because it has the most points of data on it. New accounts and recent loan applications. Every time you fill out a credit card application, that's five to six points deducted off your FICO score right away. Mix of debt, 10%. The mixture of types of debt on your, on your credit report. The higher your credit score, the more likely you are to get a better interest rate. Remember, interest in versus interest out. You want to minimize those interests on your debts because less you're paying on your debt, 
the faster you're able to accumulate wealth. Paying less for borrowing money. Uh, review your credit report regularly to ensure accuracy of your information. The value of a credit report. This is your story. The credit report is your story. And I urge individuals to look at that credit report frequently. As of right now, they still allow you at annualcreditreport.com, a site we'll go over later. You can get a free copy of a credit report once per week. I urge you to use that. Use that resource frequently to check it out. It tells your story. It shows who you are, how much debt you have, whether you've made payments on time, whether there's negative information about you about you and the public records. It shows its information. It tells your story. Make sure you can control your story. You can actually write in credit reports reasons. Let's just say uh, you were late on a payment for a bill for a considerable amount of time. Well, you know during that time you were ill or you were in the hospital or you're just coming home from prison. You know you can write that in the reasoning. So as you're going to remember, mortgages, when you go to buy that home, that mortgage lender, they're going to be looking at your credit report. And so if they see an item that's on there with no explanation, they might not give you that loan. But if they see, you know what, outside of this one item, that's the only time that he or she was late. But wait, there's an explanation here. They were ill. They were in the prison for three or four years. You know what? Outside of that, they have a very stellar history. We're going to give them this loan. Okay? You want to be able to tell them your story. I, what I just told you is an actual real example where a lender looked at that rationale that someone wrote because they, they told their story and they got the loan to buy that brand new home. You want to tell your story. These are the three made the national credit reporting agencies. And the way it works is this, Equifax, Experian, TransUnion. There are hundreds of local credit agencies, reporting agencies all across the country. As you pay your bill to Verizon, Verizon reports it to the local agency. Then that local agency reports it to one, two, or all three of the national credit reporting agencies. And they uh, pull together all the information in one location through these through the, or three locations rather. This is why you want to pull all three copies because they might have reported to Equifax but did not report it to Experian and TransUnion. You want to pull all three copies. What's on the report, it identifies who you are, your credit history, various inquiries. There's soft pulls and hard pulls. When you apply for a credit card, that's considered a hard pull. That's why it's five to six points deducted off your FICO score. Because they look at your credit to see, is this person eligible to get this credit card? They perceive that it's taking on more risk. That's called a hard pull. A soft pull is when you go to a credit counselor and they pull your report to look and see if you are responsible or just to see if they can help you analyze your credit report, that's a soft pull. That does not impact your credit score. Or if a credit card company solicits you for business, they might pull your credit report to check you out. That's also considered a soft pull because you did not ignite, you did not engage in that uh, a pull. That's a soft pull. It'll state it on the report that it happened, but that is not going to be impactful to your credit score. Judgments, unpaid tax liens, collections, bankruptcies, all of these things are what may include. It does not include checking and saving account balances, income, medical history, purchases made with cash or check, business account information. There's a whole other uh, 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 now there's there are there's business credit. Talk about that in another class. Race, gender, religion, or national origin, or your driving record doesn't have it. You can use your credit report to obtain loans and other credit to get certain types of jobs, for housing, rental applications, and mortgages to obtain insurance. Now this is the good part. There's only two reasons why your loan may be denied. No credit history, 
And I do a lot of work with populations with no credits. We just come home from prison. Uh, individuals recently widowed, and they hadn't had any involvement in, in the finance in the finances. Uh, recent graduates from colleges, from college, homeless. Uh, uh, those are the, I guess, individuals who are. Uh, if, who, they, they, these are four examples of people who have not been engaged and so have very limited to no credit history. Second one is credit problems or poor credit history. That's it. These are the only two reasons you will be denied. And guess what? Both of them are fixable. Isn't that something special? There's no problem that I've ever seen that can't be fixed. Okay? That's why you have to call us and set up some office hours so we can help you fix your credit if you have bad credit. Receive a copy of your credit score. Credit reporting agencies is to request your credit score. And credit scores have become a lot easier to use. You can sign up for services through your bank. Many banks offer your credit score. Experian, Equifax, TransUnion offer uh, your credit score and give you updates of your credit score. You can receive a copy of your credit report. This is an error on this, or it needs to be updated. It used to be once every 12 months. It's actually once a week as of, as of right now. Now, they might change it back. That's why I kept the slide here, because they might change it back. At the time of recording this, they might have changed it back. I look at it every week to see if they've changed it from one free report per week. I imagine that they're going to change it back soon, that the economy seems like it's recovered a little. But they've kept it one free once once per week for free. Here's where you get the copy of your credit report, annualcreditreport.com. You can call them. You can mail them. The website is the easiest way. I like using the website. Snail mail. I still know some people who use the snail mail way of getting it. As a matter of fact, this is one of the ways that you have to request it, where if you go through annual credit report, if for some reason they're not able to verify your data or your information, they'll give you a request to get a, a hard copy where you mail that in. This is the address where you'll be mailing it in. But that's all will be explained. They'll give you a form to fill out. You fill out the form, you fill it in, and then your credit report will be sent to you uh, to uh, copy in your hand directly. Here's a sample credit report. Uh, <clears throat> now, remember, 75% of, of credit report have errors on them. So that first part name, if it's got you, if you are a junior and your father has bad credit, well, guess what? You might have bad credit because they might have affiliated your father's bad credit with you. 75% of credit report have errors on them. It's responsibility to credit your responsibility. Again, this is your story. You want to take this seriously because many people from employment to insurance to uh, uh, housing, they're looking at your credit report. It's your responsibility to contact the credit reporting agency to write a letter disputing the error or it's, it's an easier way now to dispute this error, annualcreditreport.com. It's a drop-down box. It allows you to do it electronically. They must conduct an investigation within 30 days of receiving this letter. They'll send that letter back also electronically. It's all mostly done electronic. They've got 30 days once they receive your dispute. Send it three steps to disputing a claim, sending a dispute, receiving a response, and send your dispute to a creditor or information provider. It's just that simple. It's even easier now. Go online, click the, the, uh, the, 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 the drop down box. They'll give you uh, the reason. I do not know this debt. Uh, this debt was already paid. Whatever the reason is, you click that. Then you write an explanation. Again, another chance to tell your story. Technology is allowed us to more effectively tell our own stories on our credit reports, even through the dispute process. So we want to maximize and utilize that technology. You can build your credit history by applying for a small bank loan, applying for credit at a local store, making large down payments and negotiating credit payments, or, and I'm cautious about saying this one, asking a friend or relative to co-sign a loan for you. That does help you establish credit, but that puts them on the hook as well in case you're not able to pay. So if you go that route, 
you make sure you're responsible enough to continue to pay because you don't want them to have to be liable for your loan. Building your credit history, pay your bills on time. Ask lenders to review utility and other bills to grant you credit. Keep your debt debts low. Make regular deposits into your savings account. And for this one, there's even services now, and if you need suggestions of some that I can definitely refer you some, where they can proactively uh, allow your rent, I'm uh, well, sorry, retroactively rather, retroactively, where you've been paying rent for so long, retroactively for the last 12 months, you can get credit for all those on-time rent payments. There's services that can do that for you. Okay, you might want to check it out. Seven steps to repaying credit. Conduct basic housekeeping of your credit report. Two, pay your bills on time. Three, pay down your debts. Four, don't cancel old accounts. Five, don't fear or pay credit counselors. You should never have to pay for a credit counselor. You're in debt. You're trying to get it paid off. Paying $300 to get your credit repaired is not the responsible way to go because there's too many free services out there. If you need help or suggestions for some, give us an email or call. Six, avoid bankruptcy. Seven, be patient. No one can remove accurate information from your credit report. It takes months or years to repair bad credit legitimately. Every situation is different. As a matter of fact, those with limited credit history can repair their credit a lot faster than those that have established credit history. Okay, So if someone's just graduating college and they have very limited credit history, their credit score, as soon as we start establishing it, is going to shoot up. Now, if someone's been very active for the past 30 years and their score is bad, it might take them a little while longer because they have so much history that they're not fighting through. It does, it's not as fluid. No one can create a new identity for you. You should have never had to pay to get your credit repaired. I want to say that again. I'll say it to my blue in the face. You should never have to pay to get your credit repaired. So that's a good review of credit of your credit. I urge you, if you have any questions on this topic, this is one of the most topics where we have the most questions. If you have questions, please text or email because we want to make sure that we get your credit together. Credit is one of the strongest means or inhibitors. Bad credit is one of the biggest inhibitors of building wealth. Remember, interest in, interest out. Maximize interest on your savings. Minimize the interest on your debt. How do you most effective way to minimize interest on your debt is not get not taking out debt at all. <laughs> That's the most effective way is not taking out debt if you can help it. But if you can, if you have to take out that debt for that house or maybe that car, you want to minimize that interest. You can minimize that interest by building credit. If you have any questions, please give us a shout. We're here for you. And we want to make sure that you know. We want to make sure that you know. Uh, schedule some time for some office hours. We'll go over your credit report. We'll answer your questions. All right. With all that said, all that said, peace. Talk to you soon.